Now, I was able to get a pretty good call on this one, and it's it's funny because I got this uh, kind of call based off of a different theory that ended up getting proven wrong, which I actually kind pretty, kind of like a, I guess, self-finding humorous truth weirdness? I don't know, I don't really know what a way to describe it, but at the same time, I do like that. I, I thought that was pretty good, and what I'm talking about is during this chapter, like, we start out... Nats obviously gets a chunk of his arm pretty much just popped while he's fighting Alderaan. And Alderaan is talking about how, like, he's been waiting a long time for this all to happen. It's time for him to get up and, and you know, wake up and do stuff. And he's going to crush Giltina, you know, beneath his feet and just destroy everything. Get ready to, to claim everything as part of his land, as he says. And what I was talking about is he says centuries ago, you know... He came uh, to Giltina to rest after he was injured with Acnologia. And the reason that is, is if you go back to the chapter where... Uh, it's right after the, the the chapter where Alderaan is revealed. I think it's chapter 28 is where uh, when we have a guy... It's like, you know, an old man explaining a little bit of the lore of the Drasil cities. Ends up being Mira Jane in disguise. But says, oh yeah, you know, 500 years ago, you know, we built the these cities on top of Alderaan. And I was thinking, like... 500 years would mean that he's been resting before Acnologia and Zareph and, and Irene and all that went down. So I was like, that could be crazy. You know, if he predates that, that could, you know, mean a lot more important stuff maybe happening beforehand. Like, what would be strong enough to hurt him? But it was actually when I went to go look at it, and it wasn't 500, it was 300. Which I was like, well, damn, that just kind of, like, shoots down that whole possibility of, you know, like, oh, maybe there's stuff that had, you know, big stuff pre-existing, you know, Acnologian and everybody that could still, you know, be out there somewhere, you know, whatever it could be. But then I got to thinking, 300 is very interesting, because we know that 400 years prior, around 400 years, we know it's not the exact number, because there's been different, like, gaps of time, years, and, you know, it's the seven years, the one year after uh, Tartaros, and the one year after Alvarez. But from that, 300, around 300 years obviously means that 400 years ago, when they all fled, because Acnologi became active, he went on his dragon genocide 400 years um, back then, and all the uh, dragons that would still be alive, including the dragon gods, we don't know if there's any others alive, there might, maybe, but we know at least the dragon gods, and, um, you know, they fled, went into hiding, and if Alderaan was hurt and had to build this, you know, had the cities built around 300 years ago, this means... At the point of, you know, all the dragons fleeing from Acnologia to, you know, 100 years later, this means that he ended up trying to confront him, I imagine. I, 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 he, it just makes sense to me when you really look at Alderaan 2, because the humanoid forms the dragon gods have, that's not their, what they actually look like. Their dragon forms are, you know, their true appearance. They're dragons. This is just how they look naturally. Their humanoid forms are what they choose to look like. And as we saw with... Uh, uh, Merc Phobia, he, he looks just like a, I mean, obviously he doesn't look normal, like, if you just saw a guy looking like that in the streets, he'd be like, what the hell, but in their world, like, that doesn't look too crazy, obviously he's got the horns and he's got the eye tattoo, and other than that, he looks pretty, pretty normal within the fairy tale world, and then, oh, I gotta mute my Discord, I might, you might be hearing it in the background, uh, yeah, uh, from that, uh, the question, when you, when you really kind of, like, look at, um, when you look at what exactly that means is at some point during his um at, oh my god it's, it's still going one say let me let me let me turn that off there we go i'm hoping that's enough i exited out of there but um oh my god i lost my train of thought but uh yeah so at some point alderon you know when he when he essentially confronted like Logia, i think it, his physical appearance and his humanoid form the god seed version of alderon gives a good uh, kind of hint at it because he chooses his form with a crown. Now, he's not, a, at least that we know, a king of any kind. Uh, we know there are dragon royalty. We knew Irene. We knew uh, we knew of, uh, of Igneal. And then Acnoli, but he was more of, like, got there through sheer domination. Whereas, like, I imagine Igneal was there through just, you know, mutual respect as well as power. And then Irene, obviously, being uh, where, she, <laughs> where she was at, kind of, like, in a weird spot of, like... Uh, she kind of was there politically, but then in reality, she was there strength-wise after a while. But I, th I think Alderaan choosing to have a crown on his head in this form kind of, like, says, you know, it says something like he, maybe he, at the time of, like, he was one of the strongest dragons, and he thought of himself maybe as, like, a conqueror. And then he's like, oh, well, I can beat Akinologia. This guy's nothing. And, you know, he, at some point, he went to go fight him, got completely fucked up, 
and then had to go and rest and hide, and this is where he's at now. What's funny is, when you, uh, we have the Dragon God, like, statements of, like, oh, wait, we, they're all, oh my god, I can still hear that, <laughs> damn it. Uh, we know that they're all around Acnologia's level from what Elisaria said, and then Igneous said that they'd surpassed him. Now, so far, um, like, with Merc, I, I don't know if he surpassed him, though we did, I don't think we saw Merc at really his full power, I think in terms of just straight, like, intensity, but he didn't have his intelligence, so he probably wasn't using, like, all his best abilities, like, we didn't really see, like, what the perk was of Water Dragon, it's like, we could already see with Alderaan that he can make familiars, like, Wood Dragons clearly can make some form of familiars, um, and, you know, spawn abilities within them, uh, give them some of his skills, obviously that's pretty good. Um, and, and from them, um, we see, like, we, we essentially see, like, him discussing, oh, well, well, uh, no, uh, e explaining, really, I think is an easier way to do it, explaining how he, after he got hurt, he had the city built on him, and he was absorbing nutrients from the people, um, that were on him, because when he started, he was only big enough to really hold one uh of the cities on him and now he's big enough that he's got five and really those don't even take up that much space i mean it's really the size of his hands and then his shoulder blades and one in the middle of his back i mean in reality he could have another probably like 20 cities all over him i mean really uh, there's so many areas on his back you can put one on his neck there's multiple spots on his tail his other le like his legs and uh, he's he's got a lot more space so he, he's definitely way bigger than when he started and the reason that is is obviously over the, these 300 years he's been absorbing power from people so he's grown i would imagine beyond the normal set of a wood dragon but like the mountain size like he originally he's like oh yeah one town on him and he eventually grew bigger than the mountains around him uh bigger than the clouds and obviously like we we see how tall he is and stuff and just from head to length the dude's like uh the dude's like what 200 kilometers i think was my estimation so he's definitely a super big guy huge I, I would imagine if you took a like a wood dragon a normal one that it would still be big because we know that wood dragons are huge but he's clearly massive even for one of them and this version of him i could see like if you put him against acnology and straight power i could see him being stronger just based off of this isn't his this wasn't his normal power this is 400 years of kind of like growing beyond the normalcy of his species to like a new height he, you know he's, he's been absorbing power from these people and if he was stronger than acnologia like normal acnology i could see that if you know if, if these claims hold true i mean but that's obviously not his normal self that's but if you take acnologia like acnologia as we know like pretty much transcended beyond what he was before and be, after he ate the space between time and i don't see even close of Alderaan being able to match that version of him. I would just kind of imagine, like, even if you wanted to make a case that, uh, you know, this version of, of Alderaan is, is stronger than normal Acnologia, I don't even see him being close to the space between time Acnologia. But now, uh, now he's like, I'm awake, like, he's explaining about uh, some of his aspects, you know, when he, um, when he ended up getting so powerful, that, like, he, he couldn't really hold his power altogether, and he created, like, the, the five deities that he's that are on his body, like, each of the god seeds. He's got Wolfen, Metro, Gears, Doom, and, you know, the god seed version of himself. Uh, I think that's pretty cool. I'm, I'm wondering if that uh, it's the personalities and the fact that they are, um, the fact that they kind of are part of him, but are different people at the same time, is, is how it works, because it, it just basing it off of, I, I, I can, uh, I can kind of just guess at least a little bit that maybe the, the you know, the, the familiars are the wood dragon power. I mean, we haven't had it stated. I, I, I mentioned that earlier, but maybe it, it, that's only because of, you know, his power growing. I mean, I could see him just making generic kind of like wood golems like uh, Metro does. But I mean, other than that, I guess absorb, maybe just absorbing nutrients and growing in size is the wood dragon perk, I guess, maybe. That would make sense because, they you know, they're, they're made of wood. Then, you know, they have the, these tree-like properties as long as they're absorbing the nutrients, maybe those get bigger. I don't know, either way, he, he's got a lot of powers. I mean, he's he's got more than, honestly, I can't think of any other dragon that would have this as many kind of just like base skills. Because generally the dragons, and you know, obviously dragon slayers and they're, you know, 
copying and trying to do the same powers as whatever the dragon their attribute uh, has, you know, would would be able to kind of contain, um, you know, Nazi can burn uh, magic and uh, different energies with fire. And we, as we've seen with higher versions of what he has and what Ignea has uh, shown that it doesn't just pertain to magic. It can go beyond that as we see like Nazi burn like concepts and stuff. Um, uh, you know, you have like, um, you know, lightning dragons, you know, they, uh, that obviously like baseline accelerated speed they can paralyze people and stuff with you know just electricity um as we've seen with uh you know poison dragons poison it's gonna bypass their ability it's gonna deal uh you know poison damage to people but like all when you think about it because each of his each of the god seeds have an ability and as part of being you know being part of him that means they're also his abilities like doom's power is the same as his uh metros is part of his all, all of them all of them are all, like part of his body and i'm guessing that that's partially why also natsu's like can't like not just saying they can't see his attacks is because he's inside of his body like maybe his whole body is like a weapon that would be also a really cool maybe that's like maybe that's the perk of wood dragons is because like their whole they can weaponize their whole body like that like because it's wood so you could have like crevices like if somebody got on your back like as we've seen you know any of them like trying to fight and then he makes his uh deities come up but like you maybe like literally weaponize any part of you and in the insides and stuff because natsu is in like they're inside his body like well natsu and all the run are inside of all the run's body so I'm guessing maybe he can attack with like maybe spores or something. As we've already seen with Doom, there's like a version of it, but maybe is there like micro spores and he's like magic and, and just popping them, kind of like uh, kind of like what Azuma did when Azuma, you know, he would kind of like mess with the magic inside those uh, fruits and then he could make explosions with it. Maybe he's doing something kind of like that, but uh, you know, at a much more condensed and like crazy level because obviously the gap between uh, Azuma and Alderaan is immense, but. Uh, Nazi was just in a rough spot because, like, Alderaan just pretty much lifts his foot up and stomps down to break the cities, like, on, like, his body. And he's, like, destroying hundreds of miles of terrain around him and just yelling and the shockwaves are tearing up the terrain. And keep in mind, this is, like, just him getting the cities off of his hands and, you know, shoulders and stuff. Because after he stomps, like, they, they pretty much just fall off. So for him, this is about the level of effort of, like, Hey, there's, uh, you know, there's some dried dirt, like, in between the grooves on the bottom of my shoe. You know, you hit, you know, you lift your foot up and then smack the, you know, the toe or the bottom against the, like, concrete just to kind of, like, break some off. That's essentially the level of effort he's putting in on this. I'm going to exit out of Discord if this doesn't not stop. But, um, it's bothering the hell out of me. It hasn't done this before. I don't know why it's suddenly making all this noise. I, I bet I have it open without realizing it in the app. But, um, when you think about, like, just that level of power from such a small level of effort all runs crazy the the dude's output is insane and just seeing what uh just seeing what they're kind of going to deal with is pretty high i still don't see them beating alderon like here i think they're going to beat him later like I, I can see them beating his god seeds except for the main one but I don't know. I, I don't really see, at least at the moment, how Natsu is going to beat Alderaan unless Alderaan does something to kind of like awaken the Aetherius power inside of him. Because we know that power is still there and it hasn't been 100% confirmed. But I think after, you know, when you really just like look through the first time we saw Natsu put on that, you know, the, the, the big demon claws and the shadowing around his eyes and stuff and just the way his personality changed. And then and then you just read like when he got the the power up during the, the Merkphobia fight. It, it, it's It's... It's too, it's super hinted, but obviously it's like, well, why is he switching and stuff? Like he's using Dragon Force and his Aetherius power at the same time, so he's kind of like switching between himself and his Aetherius side, which I think is still pretty cool. But uh, it, the fact that it's there, if Alderaan awakens that somehow, I can see maybe that's how he beats Alderaan. But I don't think Nazi can beat him this by himself. I don't think otherwise the Fairy Tale Guild can really take Alderaan because. We know that the main, the main like crew, the core group of the Fairy Tale Guild, the main, you know, obviously the main people, um, them together weren't really anything to even a half trying Mert Phobia, who was not even at his full senses. He was pretty much just a, you know, they they were going against a, in that aspect like a mindless animal, and they weren't going all out like Natsu didn't pop Dragon Force or didn't bring out her new swords and stuff, obviously. But given where their response to like not even half effort, 
I think it was kind of clear that they're like, yeah, we, we're outmatched here. And they still have other powerful members of the guild at their disposal, like that wasn't there. You know, you got Laxus and you got Gildarts. Obviously, Gildarts isn't here. But also Jalal. I mean, Gildarts, Jalal's not in the guild, but he's present. But even their powers combined, I don't really see them defeating Alderaan. And him as a normal dragon, he doesn't have the motion sickness weakness that they would be able to exploit like they did on Acnologia. So they're in a rough spot. I, I personally think that they can beat the uh, God Seeds at best. But unless something happens where that that side of Natsu is awakened, I don't see how they can beat him at the moment. Um, and... And especially, like, when you see, like, just this chapter, we got to see, well, most of the God Seeds in action. Metro, Metro's up, Wolfen's still retreated and pulled back. I mean, Metro can honestly still fight, he just can't fight Natsu, because Natsu will make Zeref. But, um, he's obviously not here right now. We don't get anything with Gears' like, abilities, but we do see Dooms. Dooms is crazy. But, what was funny, it was, like, this morning, or sorry, yesterday, before the chapter came out. And, and just in general, over the past two weeks, but very much more so um it was like a couple hours before the chapter came out it's just like you know really thinking about it is metro's power is definitely the going to be the weakest just from what we saw at the time because we didn't know what doom or gears could do obviously with uh the god seed version of alderaan he has all his strength and stuff at the normal one is he just in a much smaller form so he can confront people of normal people size and um wolfen wolfen's power is is definitely a weird one it's situational because as we saw like you can make makarov you can make a ton of makarovs which to most people in the fairy tale world is still going to be a threat because makarov even though he's not strong in comparison to the main cast or any like big villains now he's still much more powerful than just you know your average wizard he's still wizard saint tier which as, as i said he's he's not he's not like a big dog anymore but still when you think about the like largest scale of the world he's still they still consider like way above the average bar, but um, you know you could have like Natsu's first case make one a happy, and it, that's not gonna really do anything. Like it, it, it's weird because you can get someone really broken, or you can get something like with a happy where it's like, well, I think he's pretty strong. It just as like you know as more of a person and stuff. Um, but outside of Zeref, like he he could have been fine just uh, you know fighting anybody else um, within the Fairy Tale Guild, um, and. Metro, Metro just seems to be, he makes these big brute force wood golems. And I was like, well, what's, what's going to be special about that? Like, if they're brute force, they have to be really brute force. They have to be just mean mugging, like, cold clock every single, like, member of the guild. And just, like, a, a, a force to be reckoned with. There's, like, super strength, and then there's, like, absurd super strength. Because generally, when you have, like, when you have a lot of, like, fictional characters, they, they end up having just abnormal strength like for a normal person uh, like for for me like if i was in an anime i could probably lift like a hundred times my normal weight just fine without like being muscular to the sides like imagine imagine like rock lee if he was as physically like built as he should be with like his level of physical endurance and whatnot he would be jacked i mean even you know you look at most characters like that but then there's like oh well super strength is emphasized where you have something like um and you have like white beard or all might or something where it's like how do you make a character super strong in like even like in comparison to characters who are going to be super strong by our standards but aren't super strong by their standards you have like well like white beard absolutely no effort like one handing stopping one of his massive ships or just you know all might's physical like output in general like i was like well what's metro gonna do metro the fact that metro's golem like can absolutely block an attack from Gaja with no real effort and no visible damage is pretty crazy like for real like if this was if this was um Alvarez act or Gaja I could still be like it's still impressive but it's not crazy you gotta keep in mind that like uh Natsu near the end of Alvarez like in base was fine like bodying Spriggan he was fine beating like the normal Spriggan obviously like Larkade, Irene, and August are exceptions even amongst the Spriggan, but like even like Nineheart and stuff, like he could take them just fine, even in base form. And then with like uh with with, with Jacob, he you know he could take him out with like a this fire dragon king mode, but it was like he still looked like he didn't really take any like any energy at him because we know like a big attack that like, Nazi's sweating and panting, and he's like, Oh, you know, you can tell there's some exhaustion in there. He seemed pretty fine after you know taking out Jacob, but um 
after that, because Gajil, like, it was emphasized that he wasn't as powerful as a lot of the other characters in Alvarez, and his was more like a character growth and character, like, he's obviously, in terms of, uh, you know, character journey, like, he's got one of the largest amounts in the whole series, but it wasn't his physical strength and his power level, really, that kind of, like, grew up at the same pace. But as we saw at the start of the whole, like, uh, Drasil confrontation, he was able to fight Natsu at least in his second state with, you know, lightning, uh, lightning flame dragon mode to a near even match. Like, Natsu didn't, you know, he didn't use fire dragon king mode, he didn't use dragon force, but he still used, uh, you still use lightning flame dragon mode, and Gajil with, uh, our shadow dragon mode was barely weaker than him. And obviously, again, their up forms, like their hybrid forms, are stronger than their base forms. So this means that uh, Gajo, with his uh, you know base form, should be around Natsu base form, and his Iron Drag or his Iron Shadow Dragon mode is about the same as Lightning Flame Dragon mode Natsu. Like obviously we we can't say they're full equals because Natsu wanted to fight him at the same tier as we saw. Like Gajo busted out Iron Shadow Dragon, so Natsu went Lightning Flame Dragon. If Natsu wanted, he could have just popped Dragon Force one shot at him. Obviously that's not the case. We can still say at least at those two tiers, base and then you know one above. Gajil can equal the same as Natsu. So this means that a base normal attack for like from, from Natsu is not going to phase one of these golems. Like, that's actually really impressive. Like, it's not it's not Dragon Force Gajo, because that would be even more absurd. But still, this means that these guys, can, these literally just mass-produced big brute force dummy wood golems can completely like not be phased by attacks that would take out a Spriggan. That's still really impressive. That that's absolutely still really impressive. And the fact uh, that puts them at a, at a really good spot, like maybe their upper Spriggan, maybe like if each of these guys are around like Larcade and Irene August tier, that'd be pretty crazy. But it's it's honestly I think it's kind of believable after that. If an attack that would take out your a normal Spriggan, even like Nineheart and stuff wouldn't even phase them, then yeah, I I I think it's all of these guys, especially because they're they, Metro is not just some random dude. He's part of Alderaan, so him being you know, him being able to match produce August level people is entirely believable. I do like that Godzilla when he got hit, he's like, "Well, this is pretty interesting getting up." I'm hoping that he ends up being like busts out his like a uh, Dragon Force or uh, well, Dragon Force maybe would be kind of too crazy. I I could see it. I'd be pretty stoked for it, but I would still like him having before getting to like I can use Dragon Force at will. If he showed that he could had like an equivalent to Natsu's, uh, you know, Fire Dragon King mode, maybe he has like Iron Tyrant Dragon uh, mode, and instead, you know, uh, instead of King going with something else, like you know, Emperor or Tyrant or Czar, or some some super badass that isn't just you know King. I, I'd be okay with King, but at the same time, I'm hoping Godzilla's is a little different spin. Um, I think Tyrant would be cool because it would kind of go with his heavy metal badass kind of like design and demeanor. It would also be really cool because it it would also like lay a lot more contrast onto like the hard side of Gajil, like when he's doing anything normally, and then you know the softer side of anything with Levy, and obviously like with his future kids and stuff. That'll just I think that'll be really cool just to see um, more of like Gajil being like I want this to be as badass as possible, and then when we know like the softer side to him too. I, I just think that'd be really neat. I like that idea, but I, I think that'd be super badass, and it would be a logical way of him being able to beat him. Because it would be like, well, why you could easily go with either he didn't use it against Natsu because like maybe there's like something with uh, the the White Witch brainwashed ones of why he didn't use it, or maybe it wasn't complete, or maybe this is where he pushes through and beats them. Because out of everybody that's there, I think Gajil. I'm trying to think of like just everybody present because Laxus isn't Laxus isn't in uh, with that group. Um, so I imagine Gajil would be the logical one if you were gonna have him beat um, have him beat. Metro, and especially because Metro's thing is just brute force, like big lumbering behemoth, like lumber dudes. I, I don't know why I said lumbering twice. Big lumbering behemoth, just tree golems. And so Gajil, who he doesn't really have any straight, like broken aspect to his power. Like the, it's so far from what I've I've noticed. Like the uh, the the perk for metal dragons would just be like general density and like hardness of their, you know, their their absolute like higher durability but also their adaptability like it was we've seen like Godzilla and he changed into steel and stuff but um 
I, I can see him being able to defeat him if he ends up getting like an equal to you know fire dragon king mode or if he ends up getting dragon force i, I think it'll be i think it will be him especially when you see like uh, like him after getting up and he's like this is getting pretty interesting and he's amused by it i mean, there's other strong characters there i mean obviously the the you know the, you got kana around and you got mira jane and stuff but i don't think anybody there that we've seen like has an output with uh with Gajil, except for Gray. Gray is the only other one I can see, but I personally I think it'll be more emphasized on Gajil, just because um, Gajil will be, you know, Gajil's the big guy here. You know, he's he hasn't had like a big moment in a long time. Maybe it'll be Gray ends up being the one to take out Metro, but the one that beats the Wood Golems is uh, is Gajil, and maybe we'll get some badass new technique from him or something. I think it'd be super cool if we got you know some form of Fire Dragon King mode equivalent for you know his Iron Dragon powers. But uh, I I also really like that just Metro like instead of like having a shield, he's just oh yeah, I put a Golem in front of myself. I mean it, they're pretty much a, a shield in and of themselves, so it just works for him. But Juvia did note like oh well, like we don't want the main body to be attacked. I'm guessing that his I, mean, I would personally guess that maybe he's a glass cannon, is that he himself is not very durable, but, it, you know, it's it, it's his big groups of, you know, people and stuff that are. Because he's, it would be, a, like, a, a pretty reasonable weakness for him. And it would be a, a pretty cool way for, like, it'd be like, oh, well, Grey, Grey found an opening that maybe Gajil set by, like, cutting through all of the wood golems and then, uh, and then Grey got in there and done, dealt the finishing blow, something like that. And then also, obviously, ice on plants would be a logical way of beating, you know, just the power counters. Um, Gears and Jalal, we didn't really see much kind of, like, get hinted at what his powers are. They just kind of really just talked. Jalal thinking Gears is the one that hurt Urza is interesting, because this means he's going to be pretty serious. It's like, I don't know why he wouldn't be serious before, but as we've seen, there's a gap between... You know, normal Jalal, yeah, I gotta do this, and Jalal, like, if somebody does anything to Urza, as, as we know, like, poor Nineheart. But, um, now Gears is great and ready to go against him. We don't get any, like, hints at his powers, but Doom we do see. And, I gotta say, I, I, I do love Wendy's character. I, like, I think she's a lot stronger than people generally give her credit for, but I, like, she, she, one, she's low on magic, but we know, like, she's a sky dragon slayer, so all she has to do is, like, large inhale, eat some of the air around her, get her magic, and stamina back. But even with that, I don't think that she's strong enough to beat Doom, because Doom obviously is being part of, uh, part of Alderaan. And with the other ones being like, oh, Godzill, oh, um... Oh, with, uh, you know, Godzill and Grey. If it's Godzill and Grey that beat Metro, okay. If it's Jalal that beats, uh... Gears, that's okay. Yeah, he's pretty strong. I, I, I personally think Wendy's a lot stronger than people give her credit for, but I don't think that she's gonna be able to, you know, one v one Doom. But I have to say, Carla, I like Carla. I, I think she's a pretty fine character. I mean, she's she's enjoyable. I mean, she's not she's not like a great, but she's not bad. I, I like that she gained some combat experience between uh, Tartaros and Alvarez. But here's the here's the thing. She's got, like, martial arts skills in her, like, you know, cat girl form, and she's got, like, her clairvoyant, like, she's able to see in the future degree, but she doesn't have any real offensive magic, and she just tries to fight somebody that is directly tied to a dragon god, a little piece of him, who, I know he looks silly, because that's, you know, the, the clear part of Doom is he's terrifying in output but silly in appearance and but i'm just like you have future sight could you not see this coming could you not see i mean maybe it's it's kind of his power because we we see like uh, well we're explaining a little bit of him when um when he's talking like he's sh that she's fated to die first and when she's uh you know goes to kick him he just grabs her foot and then like these spores come out spores get on uh get on her she turn like gets mossed over she has, you know, this vegetation on her, and she has this flower grow out of her head with five leaves. And uh, Doom explains that every after each minute, the, uh, a petal will fall, and once all petals fall, obviously after you know a minute per petal, five minutes, um, that you will die. And 
Wendy, with her abilities, like, we know that she, uh, you know, she can buff and she can do, you know, status effect things and, you know, uh, oh, do zero cancel out buffs on opponents as well, and she can undo status effects on her allies, you know, as we saw, we've seen constantly throughout the series, and she tries to go and do it, you know, tries to fix Carla, but it's explained from Doom, it's not a, it's not a status effect. You know, he's, he's saying it's the fate of death. So he's he's literally doing fate manipulation. That's the only way I could see, like, Carla, if she did, like, look into the future. And the reason she couldn't see it is because he's, like, doing fate manipulation abilities. Which uh, would make sense. But at the same time, just like, why would you try and fight him? Why would you try and fight him? Carla, you are absolutely not a... You're not a big character fighter. You have some, definitely some good support. She's definitely got some good support and just her, her general level of ability of, you know, just, she can fly, you know, she can give people, um, you know, she can give, grab somebody in the back, give them flight. The Exceed have shown consistently to be very fast, even though they aren't very powerful. Like, uh, I, I know Panther Lee is still, like, capable of doing things, but I don't think anybody's, like, going to kind of see him as, like, a big fighter. <laughs> but, uh... All of the Exceed have shown, at least consistently throughout the series, that they are able to keep up in speed with a lot of big characters because it's always been an emphasized aspect of the Exceed. But, Carla, why would you possibly try and fight this guy? Why would you even f try to fight this guy? I mean, I could even see maybe like her being like, hey, we're in a group fight, I'll try and, and you know, be useful. But did you really think you were going to 1v1 this guy? <sighs> I can at least chalk it up to the fact that even though she's an exceed, she's still a child, uh, you know, because it was, I, I'm trying to remember the exact number. I think Happy was six when he started because it was after this, uh, you know, Natsu already joined the guild and then, you know, they, all the, the, that generation of exceed all came to Earthline at the same time. Uh, they hatched at some point after Natsu joined the guild. Yeah, so I think Happy was six at the start because it would be somewhere after the seven years and then you know up to the point of early beginning of the series so around six and then you have like handfuls of couple months like scattered throughout the series of uh you know just procuring and then the two years of just right yeah two-year time skip alvarez and uh and hundred years quest so carlin happy should be logically you know maybe mentally around you know, uh, eight to nine, and Carla's definitely a lot more mature for, uh, you know, for that. But still, like, even if you took, like, the age that she takes on, she's still a kid. She's, you know, at most, like, what, like, 14 or something, and she has no real combat experience. I, I think this was very poorly decided on her part. Kind of dumb. I, I think she was letting her heroic kind of, like, ideals take the better of her, and... Uh, you never underestimate, like, a character you know should be powerful that looks silly. You never do that. You never do that. That's such a bad idea. That's literally like if somebody went up, like, some random guy went up to Wendy. It's like, oh, this is a little girl. I can beat her. And then it's like, you have no idea what this character is. You're some guy from Fodder Guild number 17. You, you have no idea. I, I don't understand how somebody who... Somebody who hangs out with a little character like Wendy, who's actually really powerful, and ends up thinking that this guy's gonna, like, what, be a pushover? So, <sighs> Carly made a bad mistake. <laughs> you made a bad mistake. I think she would have gotten this regardless, because Doom, because like, clearly she knew that Wendy couldn't fight, so she would try to do that. I think they should have moved and just kind of moved God out of the way. Uh, but I, I think regardless, this would have happened to her, but it was her decision making. I'm just like, you made a bad choice. Um, Wendy, though, like I said, can, you know, get her magic and stamina back. I don't think Wendy's going to fight her because, like I said, look at the other fights. You have potentially, like I said, either group, like large group against Metro. I think Gray and Gajo will be the biggest aspects of that fight because Gray and, and Juvia are the ones going against his main body. And Juvia is the one that's figured out, like, something, like, suspicious about him with, like, oh, you know, he doesn't want to attack the main body and stuff. And then... Gajil, like, has that whole emphasis on, on, you know, him finding this fight interesting. Um, Jalal, I mean, Jalal is Jalal, so him being able to 1v1. Uh, Gears will be understandable. Jalal is very, very powerful. He's definitely, per personally, I think Jalal is around that kind of tier, like Larkade, Irene, and August. So that's perfectly fine with B if he ends up being strong enough to beat a god seed. Wendy, no. I don't think it'll be Wendy, because when you look at the group, it's he's obviously still got Happy, you know, but... 
who else is there? We know, like, still with them is Toka and the White Witch. The White Witch is Zeref tier. We know that White Witch is around Zeref's level. She was completely able to no diff uh, most of the guild, which included Laxus and Jalal at the same time. So her, I think she will be the one to fight Doom, and especially because she's going to wake up pissed. I think she'll have more reason to side with the Fairy Tale Guild, uh, you know, even if temporarily, than side than just. Then, then just leave. I think she's going to be pissed off. She's want, going to want to get revenge on both Alderaan and Selene. So I think she's going to end up to be the one that fights uh, that fights Doom. Plus, it'd be the, a perfect way to have like a good display of what she's actually capable of, without it having to be like one of the main cast. Because if she just goes all like gets heavy and you know it's against you know any of the other people, it's going to be like, well, how do they get away? Because we've already seen she can just like point her hands at like members of the guild and drain them, and like the, the 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 fact that the god seeds are part of Alderaan mean they can use magic, but they don't rely on magic because dragons use dragon power on top of being capable of of using magic. So she won't she shouldn't be able to just to do the straight magic drain. We don't know exactly how the dragon seeds work. Maybe they're magic fueled, and that's how they kind of come to life and have personality and stuff. Or maybe we'll see actual spells she's capable of and see what she's kind of doing like. She's got in her arsenal. This is much longer than I planned. I thought this was going to be like 20 minutes. You can tell I've got a lot to say about this chapter because there was a lot to really kind of look at. And this being mostly a setup chapter for like the other fights, clearly we're going to get Doom's fight first. So I, I think that too. I think it would be really cool to, to, to kind of open these with having the White Witch like kind of like group up. Because she is actually currently still a member of Fairy Tale. She is like right now still a member of the guild as well as, uh, as Toka. So... Maybe she'll want to help him. And then, you know, Grey and Gajil, I think, will... I, I think they deserve it, because Grey... Gajil hasn't gotten a spotlight in forever. Grey, even though he beat the, you know, the Thunder God tribe, I don't think that his... I don't think he, that was really, like, deserving of the same level of output that, like, Urza got with her new swords, Wendy got with the whole stuff with Irene, and uh, and Lucy got with her Star Dress mix. So, I, I, I think Grey would definitely deserve it, too. Plus, like I said, Grey, if Grey and Gajil combined... Like, and when you look at him, like, Natsu, main character. We don't know how that fight will go um, in terms of, like, how Natsu would, would even beat him if he does. Uh, you know, but we know that there's a possibility with, like, his Etheria stuff. Um, Jalal being capable of 1v1ing them is fine. If it ends up being the White Witch, then it's fine because we know how powerful she is. And I, I think Grey and Gajil together would be a logical combination of being able to kind of stock up with like, oh yeah, with Jalal, sure, yeah, you know, them together. And against somebody like Metro who doesn't, he, he doesn't have a crazy power, like Dooms is absurd. Dooms' power is the craziest one so far. <laughs> uh, with with, uh, with Wolfins, is a super situational. Like his can be either really b good for you or really bad, but... Dooms is definitely really crazy. Uh, Metro's, I, I can see, like, depending on your power. Like, I think Doom would be definitely, or Metro would be, in, in some characters, like, maybe you would have some trouble with where they, you know, brute force isn't really going to do anything for him. But I think most opponents, he's going to be dangerous. Doom is just dangerous all around. Doom is 100% dangerous all around. But, um, yeah. Other than that, though, I, I really, really liked the setup. The stuff with Acnologia and Older, I think, was really good, and I was happy it confirmed a theory I had, um, like, regarding how he got injured. And I'm going to do some videos. I'm going to do a couple videos on a Dragon God soon because I, I got some theories on just, like, the facts of how they're going to be handled, um, how I think Alderaan will be when we see the flashback of like how, you know, what happened between him and Acnologia and why I think it's a really good writing piece and like kind of like um, things that Mashima is going to be using with that. I, why I think it's, it personally, I think it's going to be brilliant in order to really kind of use them. And, and just as like a, an easy kind of like idea of what I mean, it's like you generally don't have a lot of like characters like as big as the Dragon Gods having somebody so immensely above them understandably that they're terrified of and obviously like right now um we don't know like where they would stack up but like when you have characters who in their history are so big now but they have somebody that they're all just like you know they they had to run away they had to flee their home and go hide for hundreds of years in fear of you know this absolute monster that was acnologia and especially what you could do with it with uh with alderaan because you know with if he's if he's as arrogant as I think he is to have a crown in his humanoid form, then a human 
pretending to be a dragon and driving his race to near extinction and driving somebody that is, is probably as a large ego as I think Alderaan has like into hiding was probably like a lot of mental like just like ruin probably would absolutely like piss him off to no end and diddle would do a lot to him so and this is like 40 minutes i think this is my longest chapter review uh, as I, I had so much to say about each of them like e each character setup i think was really interesting that even the one with jalal and gears because i it was like literally a page but it was still like you gotta keep in mind like he thinks that gears is the one that hurt urza so Jalal's not gonna play too nice, and I'm, I'm hoping for some new true heavenly body spells, not just Sema. It's just, I, 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 I 100% feel like if he drops Sema, that, uh, that we're just gonna see Gears just deflect it or not do anything. Uh, especially with, like, some of, like, the range that they have, like, the distance that some of these characters are from each other, and how much, like, open space they have. Because they don't have to worry about any of the citizens that was one of the things i thought was going to be like the biggest factor is what do they do about the citizens how are they going to keep the citizens out of the danger nope citizens are crazy cultists and we're completely fine being absorbed into alderaan and so now you have no civilian casualty potential so fairy tale guild go absolutely batshit crazy and and you know be as destructive as you want and same thing with jalal same thing with like, anybody right now i mean alderaan is going crazy too so other than that, uh, comment below. Tell me your thoughts about this chapter. Uh, like I said, I, I got more to say, but I'm not going to do... I'm, I'm going to save stuff for other videos so I have more to talk about. And I can do some theories and talk videos. Because I, I got a lot of stuff planned. I got some projects I got lined up for uh, for the channel. I think it will be really fun. Uh, but other than that, uh, comment below. Tell me your thoughts are about this chapter. Tell me your thoughts are about what I've been talking about. Uh, do, do you see some of the stuff that I'm, I'm talking about? Like Alderaan Crown. I think he, I think with the way he talks to, that it just kind of displays that he has a high opinion of himself. And even like back then, before acting like it, he probably thought he was like a, a pretty impressive dragon. As we haven't really seen anything. Like we've seen dragons. Like we've seen some of their sides, but we haven't seen too much of like anti-human dragons like we know we've gotten some like we got like zircona scissorun and all them but we didn't really get a huge insight on their side and like how they like the, the the fact that their race that was the dominant species of the planet was driven to near extinction and then the remainder hid for centuries uh, it, that's gonna be some good stuff but other than that comment below thumbs up the video from the like button subscribe button and check out my other videos but other than that i appreciate everybody's already subscribed and i thank you all for listening bye